everything inside me. Bill Duriddle, director of the International Center for Security Analysis, King's College London, writes, In a society that believes in nothing, fear becomes the only agenda. A society that believes in nothing is particularly frightened by people who believe in anything. That's a measure of how far we have become isolated and atomized. Manly Palmer Hall writes, it is entirely impossible to chain man merely by enslaving his body, the mind also must be held, and to accomplish this, fear is the accepted weapon. The common man must fear life, fear death, fear God, fear the devil and fear most overlords, the keepers of his destiny. James Jesus Angleton, head of CIA Counterintelligence 1954-1974, said, Deception is a state of mind, and the mind of the state. William Casey, former CIA director, said, We will know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. There have been a huge number of science fiction films based upon frightening future scenarios that play with the human fear of the unknown, science gone mad, nuclear apocalypses, zombies that wipe out most of the known world, and so on. In most cases, these fictions cleverly manipulate our apparent lack of understanding of technology, science, nature, etc. Before I examine some of the post-apocalyptic future scenarios presented in science fiction and the possible connections with the hidden global agenda, it is worth taking a generic look at the history of the climate of fear paradigm and how various agenda players have used it to their advantage. As Alfred Hitchcock once said, there is no terror in the bang, only in the anticipation of it. Always make the audience suffer as much as possible. The news media regularly features special reports, known in the industry as over-the-horizon pieces, which present various doomsday scenarios, such as asteroid collisions, alien invasions, solar flares, climate change, economic collapse, etc. These pieces often come with the addendum that mankind is on the brink of the proverbial abyss. We are told how society will, under such circumstances, probably be plunged into the dark ages, gangs of looters will stalk the streets, food and water will become scarce, the skies will darken, and so on. The traumatic effect upon the viewer often undermines the ability to stand back and examine the issues in a critical, objective and unbiased manner. The scenarios presented are often cemented in our psyche as inevitable certainties, the reason this occurs lies with the level of legitimacy that we apply to the information given to us. If we have no way of judging the accuracy of the information, our cognitive processes fall back upon the level of trust we have in the apparent source of the information. The level of trust determines the value of the information and every subsequent source of information that is connected to the subject. This psychological process, when we do not know the original source or accuracy of a piece of information, but trust those who relate it to us, that is, for example, the mainstream news, etc., is called source amnesia. Mass conveyance of a manufactured or exaggerated concept can also saturate public consciousness to the point where we, the masses, will determine the degree of its inevitability. This is largely perpetuated by nothing more than a mass naive trust in those who first conveyed the information, again, usually the mainstream media or a collective herd mentality. It has happened time and time again in recent history. Prominent examples include the Cold War, population growth, climate change, the War on Terror, Agenda 21, and, most recently, the Great Reset. Notably, one key figure in the last 50 or so years of U.S. politics, Zbigniew Brzezinski, has openly admitted this. The vagueness of the phrase was deliberately, or instinctively, calculated by its sponsors. Constant reference to a war on terror did accomplish one major objective. 
it stimulated the emergence of a culture of fear. Fear obscures reason, intensifies emotions and makes it easier for demagogic politicians to mobilize the public on behalf of the policies they want to pursue. During his life, Brzezinski has referred to the mass of humanity in all manner of pejorative terms. During a lecture at Chatham House on November 17, 2008, entitled Major Foreign Policy Challenges for the Next U.S. President, he said, in earlier times it was easier to control a million people, literally, it was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million. In the early decades of the 20th century, the Tavistock Institute study of retrogressive psychology allowed the global agenda players to take advantage of these aspects of the human mindset, creating a kind of crisis strategy or shock doctrine with which to manipulate and manage mass perceptions and emotions. The Tavistock Institute conducted extensive studies of post-traumatic stress caused by the bombings of Germany and Japan. Several key agenda figures had strong connections to Tavistock methodology and retrogressive psychology. The early 20th century PR guru Edward Bernays encouraged mass irrationality by tapping into the deepest of human fears for the benefit of the ruling elite. He called it guiding from above. Another, who was interested in the phenomenon, was Fabian Society member and the Rhodes Roundtable co-founder, Bertrand Russell. He once said, hitherto, in this regard, wars have been disappointing. We need to bring into being another black plague. Although many believe that Russell was referring to population reduction, it is clear he was alluding to multiple aspects of agenda manipulation. Walter Lippmann also had similar views. He is credited with being one of the first to categorize the paranoid dread of nuclear death that permeated the latter part of the 20th century. The creation and maintenance of a climate of fear has always been a clear component of the global agenda. Curiously, some of those with a connection to this paradigm haven't exactly gone out of their way to hide their efforts. There are a number of existing documents that highlight these elite orchestrated machinations. One of the most infamous and hotly debated is report from Iron Mountain on the possibility and desirability of peace. The report was released into the public domain in the mid-1960s via one Leonard C. Lewin. Lewin purported to have met with an acquaintance, who he ambiguously named John Doe. It seems that John Doe wanted to remain anonymous because of his alleged connection to the report. Doe claimed to be one of 15 prominent individuals who had been approached to form a think tank, called, the Special Study Group. The group were allegedly given unrestricted access to both top-level documentation and any expert that could assist with their research. The purpose of the research was to investigate alternative societal, political, and economic replacement systems that could be implemented should the world achieve a state of permanent peace. The report presents an almost unemotional, surgical, and strategic-like analysis of the potential systems that could replace wartime military institutions and the global dependency on them during permanent peacetime. The report concluded that any replacement system would only be effective if it were perceived as a justified necessity and that such justification could be met with a proportionate threat or fear quotient. The report also highlighted the usurping of the extraterrestrial phenomenon via real-world scenarios and fiction to create false flag psyop, fear-based contrivances that would benefit the agenda. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.